Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today's lesson is on Vincent Van Gogh's sunflower and we're going to be making a sunflower. This lesson will be easy for anybody ages six on up. So I will explain it thoroughly in a step-by-step -step procedure. If you look here, you're going to see this gorgeous field of flowers. Now these sunflowers are actually in Florida. Vincent Van Gogh, when he went to the south of France, he fell in love with the countryside. And it was there that he painted his most famous paintings. And a group of them, about five of them, were sunflowers. He actually painted one of the sunflowers for one of his friends, Paul Gauguin, who came to stay with Vincent for a while in the south of France. And he actually hung it in one of the bedrooms of his house. This painting then went on to become one of Van Gogh's greatest works of art. And it is hanging in the museum in London. I hope you enjoy this beautiful sunflower field and, and the lesson on Vincent Van Gogh. To start off the sunflower, we're going to go in the very center of our paper, put a dot, and then we're going to draw a large circle around the dot. We're going to go equal distance from the center, so we're going to go three fingers from the bottom, take the dot, go three fingers, and make a mark. So the center, three fingers down, so that's going to be the, put a line, from the top, put a line, that's three fingers. And then I tilt my page to the side and I do three fingers and I do three fingers on the top. That way we have a large circle so that we can form the center of the flower. And I'm gonna just do a curve. I'm just gonna curve each one, curve, curve around. Now go slow, just come down and around and down and around. So this forms the center of our flower. And actually in a sunflower, it's made up of lots of little tiny flowers called a disc florets. Little teeny tiny flowers. And then the outer petals are the ray florets. And that's what we're gonna form now, the ray floret, which is the part, let's look on Van Gogh's, it's the part that comes out of the center of his flower. I'm going to show you some ray florets on a real sunflower as well. This is the ray florets radiating out from the center of the sunflower. And you can see how there are many of them. We're going to do one row at a time. And here are the florets about to bloom. Now we're going to form those florets coming out. And they have a little bit of a point. So what we're going to do is, here's the edge of our page right here. We want to leave a little space from the edge. So I'm going to drop down and I'm going to start with a capital letter A, but I'm not going to put, so it's kind of an up and down shape, but I'm not going to put the, the cross part of the A in. So I just go up and down like I'm forming the capital letter A. And then I'm going to, and then what you do is you come out a little bit and then go back in. Like and this is kind of like a diamond. And this is going to form the floret, the ray floret right here of the sunflower. Now a real sunflower is pointed some right here. Now that's the ray floret. Now we're going to fill this area with ray florets. What I like to do is turn my page two fingers from here. I'm going to come up a little bit and put a dot. And then I'm going to do my capital letter A shape. I'm going to come out and then back. Out and back. This is skinnier here, so it forms like what my kids said today, a diamond. I have some six and seven year olds here right now with me doing this lesson. It's a live lesson. 
So now we're going to turn our page. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to put a dot above, two fingers, the capital letter A shape. We're going to continue down, continue down, and then go skinny back, skinny back. So that's another one of our little florets. And we're going to do this by rotating our page again. So we're going to fill our page with cat, making sure you're past the part. Capital letter A, come back, come back. It's like a capital letter A. Let me show you the capital letter A here. See? It's, a, it's the almost like an upside down, see, V. So that's the shape we're using. Now I'm going to go in between and do the same thing. Now I'm going to have you do this on your own. So I'm going to stop the video so that you can have time to fill up yours. And then you wanna do another spit one in between, okay? And then I'm gonna show you how to do, once you filled them all up, I'm gonna show you how to do the ones behind this. Now what I've done is I've continued around the whole thing, doing top, bottom, side, side, and then I found the center and put another one in the very middle. So from here to here, I measure the middle and put another one in and another one in. So if you look, there's one on the top, one on the bottom, one on the side, one on the other side, and then diagonally they come down, and then diagonally they come down. Now our next step is to put another one in the very middle of every one of these. So now I'm going to rotate and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put a dot here between the two petals or the florets. And then I'm gonna do it again. Up, down, connect, connect. You see how that formed that? So now I'm gonna just turn and I'm gonna put another one in every single one of these. I'm gonna put another one in here turn, another one in here, another one in here, and another one in here, and another one in here. So I go all around and another one in here. So I have a complete sunflower with all the petals. I'm going to do that while you're doing that. So go ahead and do that and then I'll show you the next step. Now we're going to add another row of these little florets. The ray floret that comes around the edge because the sunflower has lots of these. So to do that, all we do in the back now, behind each one, see how there's a floret here and here? We're just going to go up and back and do another set of petals. But look, we're not going to have to do the bottom of this because it's hiding behind this one. You see how that does that? So all I do is from one petal to the next, or one floret, I just go up and back. And this is the next set of petals that go around, or florets that go around the sunflower. So I just turn and I go up and back, like that A shape. And it just makes another la layer of petals, or florets. right around and just continue up and back and then this makes it a really thick full sunflower up and back up and back it's like an a shape we can practice the letter a now on the sunflowers when i visited that beautiful field the sunflower field 
had lots of beautiful bees. So let, let's look at some of the bees on the sunflower. Now we're going to go ahead and make the bee, and we're making it a little bit bigger than what we saw on the sunflower, so it's easier to see the bee. And artists often exaggerate things and make them larger than what they really are. So let's go ahead and do that. On this side, I'm going to make my bee, and the bee's going to take up about two to three fingers here. So that's really exaggerating compared to the sunflower that we just saw with the bees on it. I'm going to start off with a circle, a good sized circle, and it's bigger than my tip of my finger here. So when you put your finger down, you can see the circle. So make a good sized circle. And that's going to be the abdomen of the bee. And then we're going to put the next body part. We're going to come up and back. This is the thorax area of the bee. So we're doing a bump that's up and back. Now we're gonna add the head that comes off and that's just a little bump. Now this is a gorgeous bumblebee here and it's got black and white. The head area, color in black, or black and yellow I believe. And then the middle area here, we're gonna color in right where it meets the thorax we're gonna add some black to this. And then we're gonna add a little stripe here, but leave the tail so it's yellow. We can have that yellow. Right now it just looks black and white, but we'll add some yellow to it. Now, my first graders, all insects have how many legs? Six. Oh, wonderful. So let's add six legs. We're gonna do two short legs that come out right near the thorax, one, two, and then the two black back legs are gonna come out near this yellow, this stripe here. One, and they tilt backwards, two. This one's a little bit longer. Curve it out and then make this one a little bit shorter. So two that face backwards, two in the front. Now our little insect also has, I had some vocabulary here if I can find it, some antenna, antennae or antennas. So we can go one, two, and then kind of curve out one, two. Some antennas. And of course they have some wings. The wing is gonna come out right near this, the first leg here. We're gonna come down and around, down and around and back up. And they have one large set of wings here, and then they have a smaller set. Just kind of make another line coming out and back. The smaller set is underneath. And then if you want to add, let me bring this in closer so you can see, these tiny little veins in, in the wings you can. That kind of makes it gorgeous. And that's how you make the bee. Now, if you want to add another bee or, a, you know, two or three more bees or maybe a bee up this side, we could do that. But this is basically how you do your sunflower. And for my class, I'm going to add some real fun texture to this, and I'm going to show you how you do that in a minute. My kids did a beautiful job in class today with their little bumblebees on the Van Gogh sunflowers. 
just going to show you a few examples and then I'm going to show you how we're going to go ahead and finish this off. This one's lovely. Nice detail in the bee. You want to make sure your sunflowers are big enough so that you can make some detail in your bees. Now we're going to go ahead and add some beautiful texture to this. Now the inside of this flower here is where all the little florets are happening. These are the disc florets and I'll show you on the real sunflower what it looks like close up. We're going to be adding the detail to the florets on the outside. So the center will only have a simple pattern or texture. If you look on Van Gogh's here, it's sometimes he just made the paint so thick. There's a little bit of pattern here for this texture for the inside. So we're just going to do some rubbing to get the inside texture and then lay some black paint on top for that but we'll be using some detail with oil pastel to get the different values in these little ray florets here. Now for the center, I'm using this texture plate, but if you don't have texture plates, you can use anything that's gonna create a texture. You can use a sidewalk, a brick wall will give you some beautiful bumpy texture. Sidewalks work really well, so my kids are going to go outside and do the sidewalk area for this texture, but I'm going to show you how to do a texture rubbing. You want to put the paper on top of the texture, the rough surface. So this is going to go, and I want the bumpy side, I, no I'll do it on this side. So this is going to go underneath the area that I'm going to do my rubbing, and I'm going to do, and you. Um, just this inside of the flower and you take your crayon and you use the flat side of the crayon and just push really hard like so let me blow it up so you can see it or, or make it larger for you so you can see and I'm gonna vary the colors too I'm not gonna do just one I'm gonna do a several of them because if you look close up in the center of a flower you'll see that it has lots of different colors on the inside. So now I'm moving my paper over, because I want to make sure that I'm getting the texture where I want it, and then I'm going to rub using the side of my crayon here and push hard. Now the key to this is you don't want to move this as you're rubbing. And I'm going to layer some different colors too. I like having the variety of color, so we have a lot of value and color inside this. Now I'm gonna do some green too right on top, because if you notice, the inside had some of that green showing. So I'm gonna move this, do some yellow rubbing. The yellow rubbing doesn't show up too much on camera, that's why I'm using some of the other values too shows up pretty nice. You want to push kind of hard because we're going to use some black paint on top and create a resist. So you want this to be pretty dark. I'm going to get some of this bright yellow too. This is gorgeous. And what the black paint will do, it, was, it will fall into all the cracks that we did not um, cover with the crayon and it will absorb into the paper. Okay, I think that's pretty good for now. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be putting in some of the lighter values of yellows and yellow oranges and we're using some oil pastels. So I'm going to color in lightly. I'm just gonna do some texture like this coming up on the flowers. If you look at Van Gogh's, let's look close and see. He has, he's using some yellow orange. He has some brown in here too, but will he be using brown paint on the top to fill in for brown? Some lighter yellows on the tips. So on your edges, you can do real bright light yellows. See right in here? How we have some bright light yellows on the tips. So we're gonna be using yellow oranges, oranges, light yellows, all of the values of orange and yellow orange right in here. So let me show you the colors. 
So all of these creamy colors, creams and yellows and light yellows and yellow oranges, orange, maybe you live in some red orange too. That's orange right there. And these light oranges. Peaches too. We can use a little bit of this peach too here, this salmon pink color too. So all of these values here. So I'm going to go ahead, especially in the ones in the back. So the double row back here, I'm going to do some darker colors back here. Because this will be, and I'm going to even add some of this darker orange back in here. And then the top petals are going to be lighter. And some lighter cream in here. I'll work up a few and then I'll let you do it on your own. So watch how I'm going to work some of them up. And I'm just kind of doing lines. And then I'm doing some of the yellow, lighter yellow on top. Like so. And then we'll put some brown paint on top with a resist. You could even draw some brown. Trace these edges with brown too. That would look good. I'm going to do some of these right here, right now, first with some brown. Like so. And then we'll work up our petals. Just like that. And I'm gonna work up all my petals and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. What I've just done is all of the darker orange right in the back. And you can see I didn't color every spot. I just kind of very quickly, just within a few minutes, did a few bits of color. Now I'm going back with some lighter yellow right on top and it blends the color right in. So I'm working up the darker petals in the back first. And just with lighter yellow right on top, coming through quickly, just like that. Let me show you close up. Here's the darker petals. I just take my lighter yellow and it blends in and it kind of moves the darker orange to the, all to the areas, to the spots I missed. I'll show you here, see how this is just moving the darker orange. And that's how I'm working up my darker petals right now, just like that. My front petals here, or florets, florette. I'm just taking very quickly, you can see how fast this is. I'm just taking the yellow, coloring them in quickly. I don't have to get every spot because I'm gonna layer another color on top. And this is a pretty light color yellow. This is a lemon yellow, one of the lightest in the box. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some chrome yellow, which is a little bit uh, of a yellowy orange color, and just do some lines on there. And this will be the brighter ones. And it's just very quick. When Van Gogh did his paintings, he worked really fast. And his sunflowers were the most beautiful pictures that he's ever made. They are his most famous ones, and they are considered his greatest achievements. And he placed real thick paint on the sunflowers, just globs of it, to show the light hitting the flowers, real thick. They must have taken a long time to dry because they were oil paints. And there is the sunflower. Now we're going, going to be, uh, now we're all ready to go ahead and add some resist to this. I do want to do the bee though with a bright yellow. I might need to clean that. So if your tips are a little bit dirty, just take a towel 
paper towel and wipe it in so that you have a nice clean color. And I do want a bright yellow bumblebee here. And the wings I want to keep white. So I'm going to use some white oil pastel for my little bee. Just like that. Now there is a part of the flower, the fillery, fillery, which is the green part that comes out. And we see some of this. If you want to put some green these little little bits of green coming out here. You can on some of this edge. And then even on the bottom here, if you wanna make a stem, you can put a stem and then just a little bit of this. It's just kind of like a V shape. Just gives a little bit of green to this. And I'm not gonna work it up on the top. We're only gonna be able to see it on one side here. But this was quite beautiful in the flowers I saw at the field I visited. And now we're ready for our resist. For the resist, I'm just using pan, some pan watercolors. And I'm gonna do some brown on top of the resist. So I'm dipping my brush into the water, swirling into the color. And if you notice, it's beading up right now and forming puddles. You wanna move those puddles around. You only need to dip in one time and just move that around the center. And if you wanna dip into black too, if you feel you wanna get a little bit darker, you can. Let's look at Van Gogh's. I think the brown is good enough. I don't want it to be too, too dark. And what it does is it falls into all the little cracks that we missed and gives a nice texture to this, like so. So I moved my paint all around. I don't wanna leave puddles behind. And I don't wanna to push too hard either. And now I can really see that gorgeous yellow pattern that texture come out. Now I'm gonna do the same on top of the flowers a little bit. His sunflowers had a bits of brown. Now I just barely dipped into the brown paint. I have a lot of the water on my brush here. Now you see that's leaving a puddle. So I don't wanna leave these thick puddles here. I can go off a little bit and that'll leave a little shadow or show a little bit of a brown leaf behind here even. So I wanna move this puddle so I can bring it to the other areas. All you really need is to dip in one time into the paint if your brush is loaded with water. Cause you just need a little bit of accent of this brown, not a lot. We don't wanna make our paper all brown. We want our sunflower to be bright showing. So I wanna move that around here and just use it as accent. And it'll flow into the cracks that we missed and give a nice effect. And then you can choose a gorgeous color for your background. And I'm just going to go with um, a similar color like Van Gogh did here, blue. But if you want to go ahead and put on, you know, uh, a green background or add more bees to your background, however you want to finish it, it's up to you. But like I said, I'm just going to do some teal here and green like it's in the field. And then I will um, show you when it's done. And maybe put some of the blue too. Yeah. And then right up to the flower like so. And kind of keep it kind of patchy. Maybe I'll do some brown too. Like that on the edges. But I want the um, main sunflower to be the subject. I don't want my background to distract from it. So I'm gonna finish mine and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. I'm just finishing up. I did some of this teal blue down at the bottom and then some green around the top area. I think it looks great at the top. 
some nice deep green coming off of here because it gives a nice contrast to the orange. And I'm going to finish up here and then I will be done. And I hope you enjoy the lesson and be sure to subscribe if you have not already subscribed and if you like the video, click the like button. And thanks for watching.